all right hi everyone this is an introduction to um switching or how do i don't even know what to say this is but it is definitely an instruction introduction um lab to um how to um travel around your switch how to do your um initial configuration on a switch and i'm sure this is a packet tracer lab by cisco so if you're thinking of becoming a network engineer this is something you must be be able to do each free you have to be confident about it and you have to be able to do things even when you're just waking up from bed so we are just going to go through it and then just get things done so here everything they just want us to do is to understand how to move how to go around travel around the three different modes we have in um in um in um on our switch so um what i'm just going to do this um um um, um objectives here that i have on this coin here i'm not just going to look at it because i know what i'm meant to be doing so what i will do first is to let you know this is a switch and this is a computer so we are trying to connect this to the compute to the switch trying to connect the computer to the switch and when we are able to connect the computer to the switch we are going to be able to manage the switch from the computer and that is why this is very important for us to understand so on the switch if i go on there you can see the switch right now is locked i'm not allowed to go into the command line interface where i can I'll be able to um to manage the switch so they want you to forcefully use your um computer to do that so what i'm going to do is i'll go to the um, networks you can see this is for network cables um it's for your connection so you have all your network cables that you might need but when you are connecting a computer a laptop a desktop to a switch you want to use a um copper straight through cable and the reason is uh, uh this is the formula i use for this when you are connecting um different um um devices devices that are of different nature like a computer a pc to a switch you use straight through and when you are connecting a switch to a switch they are similar devices so you use crossover i know normally if you are connecting um a switch to a switch you, you should you you would imagine that you should you, you should be able to use um a straight through because they are same 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 um same device same devices similar devices but let me tell you this is what um what's it called um cisco wants and this is their thing they're the manufacturer and they've decided this is what's going to be what's going to be used and you just have to follow suit so in my case that's why we are going to be using a straight through cable to connect to this switch and that is the reason why you you should always use a straight through cable and um i think with time i'm going to tell us why do we have to use a straight through cable to do this i will explain that later in the future but for now when you are connecting similar devices switch to switch use crossover when you are connect connecting unlike devices different devices like a pc to a switch a pc to a router a router to a switch you use straight through so let's go on i'm going to connect my straight through cable to my switch and i'm going to use any of this um, um interface but i like to use for my switch i like to use gigabit okay and this dot you see here this dot you see here is just telling you that stp is running spanning tree protocol so you don't need to know that for now i'm just saying and with time this is going to turn to the queen and all the ports on the switch by default they are enabled all the ports on the switch by default they are enabled and that's why this is going to turn to green okay so let's move on even though i have connected my straight through cable to um my switch let's see if i can get into the switch and start managing it let's see if that can happen i want to minimize this let's see if that can happen so i've clicked on my computer and this is what i got so if i go to the desktop 
on the desktop i have access to configure my uh, ip address i have terminal i have command prompt i have web browser and all those things but for now we want to make use of the terminal because the reason why we want to make use of the terminal is because the switch is locked we cannot we cannot use the switch itself to configure it itself now so we need to use the terminal but remember i've only connected my ethernet straight through cable copper straight through cable would i be able to configure the switch yet from my computer that is a no that is a no you can see i can't see nothing that is a no so i just want to purposely show you in order to configure your switch from this computer here you need to connect a console cable to the console port of the of this of, of your switch so this is your computer you are going to connect the console cable to the rs232 on the computer and then you take it to your switch and connect this to your console and after you have done that you can then click on your computer go to terminal and then click on OK, you are going to see that you can now have access to your switch. You can see that's S1 now. So when you get in here, what can you do? This 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 mode, the first mode you see immediately, this one that has a greater than sign is called the um, user exec mode user exec mode and in user exec mode there's little to what you can do you cannot do so much so if i put a question mark it's going to show me every command that i i can i, I will be able to use when i'm in user exec mode and these are the commands connect so if you want to connect to another switch you can do that from here by just saying connect and type whatever you want um, the ip address of whatever switch you are trying to connect to you can turn off privilege commands so you can use a disable command everything you see on the left connect disable disconnect enable exit they are all commands that you are able to use uh, um, when you are in user exec mode okay so if i use let's see what what, what do i have there if i say show you can see i have show here okay so if i say show run that is invalid can you see that so uh because there's little there's so so much little you can do let me see show show running system information so if i say show let me see what can show me show okay so show version can actually work here show version so if i share if i say show version and you can see i've just typed in show and i put a space and a and a, and a question mark it's going to tell me what other commands i can do with this so it's telling me i can do show version which means system hardware and software status so if i type in version there can you see it's telling it is showing me now um the kind of switch i'm on the ports that's on the number of ports i have on my switch 26 and the model of my switch the version 15.0 of my switch and then the software image which is in which is in flash on my switch so this is everything you can do let me go back here this is all you can do i i, I use i use the question mark a lot because it helps me so i don't have to cram any of the commands try and use the question mark if you are confused use the question mark is going to tell you what you can do as you can see there is a there is a logout where is it logout here if i type in logout there and enter you can see that's working so go back in put your question mark and try to see what can i do from here so if i type in enable now that's what i want to say and that's the next thing i want to show you actually remember i said when you see a greater a greater than sign that is user exec mode so now as an as a network engineer there's little you can do when you are at the user exec mode in order to configure your switch you need to go to the global exec mode but for now can we jump to the global exec mode from the user exec mode no that's not possible so we need to go to the um to the um to the privilege exec mode and in order to go to the privilege exec mode can you see here it says you need to type in enable and turn on 
privilege commands. So I'm just going to type in enable. And then the fact that the sign here, can you say I have a greater, greater, greater down there, but now I have an ash sign. The fact that I have an ash sign tells me that I've jumped, I've moved away from the user exec mode to the um, privilege exec mode. And also let's type in a comma, a, a, a question mark to see what can we do here. And here, this is, you can see we have more options here. And this is what we can do when we are at the privilege exec mode. We can ping also, we can do that in the first one. We can, we can, we can do SSH, we can do telnet, we can write, which is save. We can um, set the clock, we can clear, which is reset function. We can delete a file, so we can check the directory. So, you know, all these things now, I've never used it, this directory command before. What I can do is try it and see how it works. So I'll just type in dir and question mark. And it's going to tell me what directory do I want to check. Do I want to check what I have in NVRAM or do I want to check what I have in Flash? So that's why you see Flash and NVRAM here. So I'm going to say I want to see what is in Flash. And let's say I don't know what is next. So I have a question mark again whenever you click you you do that space question mark and you see this cr carriage return that means that that command is completed all you have to do is press enter and you can see this is what i have in my flash it's telling me that presently in my flash i've got this information and this is um the bin i think that's where that's where um um, I, I can't remember. I think that's where the software or something iOS is saved. I think that's what this is. And then this is where config, config test is saved. So all these things, you can try them out. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. If you want to really be, be, be confident and go into the um, practical lab and maybe you want to do your CCNA certification exam, you need to understand all these things perfectly and also you know uh you want to be working as a network engineer all these things you must be familiar familiarize yourself with it and let's say what can we check from here again uh we've done that let's put another question mark and see what can we try again uh you can see this this disable that turns off the privilege command so this is how you know what to do when you want to go out of the privilege command if i type in disable that will take me out of the privilege command to um to um user exec mode and if i type in enable that will take me back into privilege command and now we've seen this is all we can do we can change the clock we can configure okay that's the next thing i want to do actually but before i go there i want us to set the clock because this shows us that we can set the clock um uh, on on of our switch here so what can we do we've seen where it says clock i'm just going to pick the command clock and if i don't know what next to do i'm going to space it and put a comma and it's going to tell me what's the next command and the next command is set you can see set the time and date. If you say set, I'll leave a space and then comma again. And it's telling me the next thing I have to do is to type in hour, month, and and seconds. And I'm just going to do that. Let's say what's the time? 20, 20 for the five hour, hour minutes, sorry, hour minutes and seconds. And let's say zero zero. So if I finish that, I can space again and put a question mark and it's going to tell me what next I need to do, month. And I'm just going to pick that, month. And I'm going to put a question mark again and it's going to tell me day of the month. Today's date is 06, so I'm just going to put 6, okay? If I don't know what next to do after putting 6, question mark, it's going to tell me I need to put the year now. So what's the year we're in? We're in 2023. And I'm going to put a question mark again. And you can see it says coverage return. Actually, there's a mistake where it's asking me for month. I need to actually type in um March. March, we're in March. So, and you see that? And now, if I go back out here, and then I press question mark again, it's telling me coverage return. You have done everything that needs to be done. Just press enter. And then your time will be set for you. 
So, and that's how simple um, practical um, exam should be. So, let's see what other things can we do here. Um, um, let's see. I think we should be able to write. Um, we should be able to write. So, let's write. Let's save something here. What we have just done. Let's, uh, let's use copy. We can use copy here or we can use write. Okay. So, let's use copy. So, if I want to save what I've just done, it says I can do it from this, from here, from privilege exec mode. So I'll just type in copy because I saw it up there and I'll type in comma um, um, space and question mark and it's telling me what do you want to copy. So, I will tell it I want to copy the running config, the running configuration. Can you see it says copy, copy from current system configuration. So I'm going to type in this command here. So copy running and if I don't want to keep typing all, now that I've typed, I've typed run, I can use my tab key to complete that sentence for me or that statement for me. So copy running config, I'll put a question mark again and it's going to ask me where do you want to copy this to and I'll say I want to copy it to startup config. Sometimes some things you want to copy them to TFTP server somewhere. Sometimes you want to copy something and save them in your flash. Sometimes you want to copy something and save them in your file um file transfer protocol or something i think but for now we want to save this in the startup config so i'll just say copy running start and i can use my tab key to complete this statement for me and then let's put a question mark and it says we've done see how means oh you don't have anything to do more just press enter and that will be is asking me where do i want to save it and i will say i want to save it in my startup config and i'll press enter again and that's saved for me and there's one last thing i want us to do before we move into the um, global configuration mode and let me just type in the question mark here again to see what we can do and then the next thing i want to do is to show can you see the show show running system information so if i type in show and then space and a comma it's going to ask me what do you want me to show for you because there's a lot of things that can be shown we can actually view in the channel information we can view have a look at the flash we can have a look at host we can have a look at interfaces we can have a look at ipv4 ipv6 login mark mark address table but for now i want to show my um my startup config the one i've just saved and you can see it here startup config so i'll just say so show start and then tab key to complete it and then if i want to know if there's something more to type i can just put a question mark and it tells me that's all and then that's it and it shows me everything that we have just done and you can see we have just set the time i think and we have just um, what, what, what have i just done can't even remember what we just did again um we set the time and the, i think that's all we did but it's not actually sure but, but this is how you just have to get this done so if you don't have anything to do anymore we can then move on now let's move on to um to where to global configuration mode for now let me disable and then let's go out and let me exit now we are outside we are outside so press enter and this is a user exec mode from user exec mode in order to get to your privilege exec mode you type in enable and from user exec mode in order to get to global configuration mode global configuration mode that is where you you you, you manage your router or your switch whatever you do in the global exec mode affects your switch in totality affects your router in totality so if you want to change the name of your router you want to, this is where you have to go so in order to go to global exec mode let me just type in a comma to see what 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 do i need to do and you can see here it says configure enter configuration mode so if i type in configure and then um and then and then I leave a space, configure, configure, and then leave a space with a comma. You can see it says, what do you want to do? Configure what? 
so then you can say configure terminal so i'm just going to type that use my tab key to complete it for me and then check if there's still sorry my that's my son <laughs> so now I, i've done configure terminal let's put a question mark then you can see it says carriage return that's all just press enter and now once you see this config config thing here it means you are in the global configuration mode once you see the ash thing here ash that means you are in privilege exec mode and when you see a greater down that means you are in um um user exec mode so all these things we have to know them by art as a network engineer because this is our job everything we are doing here is what we are going to be doing when we start working and for you for your information i want you to remember that we are managing our switch using our pc which is what you are going to be doing most of the time also so now in global configuration let's see what can we do so if i um type in a question mark you can see here we have a lot a lot a lot of things that we can do so we have um authentication authority authorization and accounting we have access list so we can add access we can add banner we can uh there's a lot there's a lot you can see enable so if you type in enable it's going to tell you what do you need to do with enable and order so we are going to see let's see let's start let's pick let's pick with the banner let's start with the banner and a banner is a way to tell people who are not authorized um to to log onto your switch or your router is a way to display a message to tell them if you are not authorized please don't don't log into this router so let's see let's start now you can see i have where it says banner so what i'm just going to do is just type banner there and leave a space and a question mark and it's telling me okay if you want to set the banner the next command you need to type is motd which is set message of the day so motd means message of the day so i'm just going to type motd space comma and it's telling me the next thing i have to do now is type any letter type my message and then type that same letter that i've typed in the first place so delimiter is what is called so i'll just type a hash hash key no hash and i will say let me actually have something like hash 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 and i will say for i would say authorized authorized users only and i have i want this and then i'll have my hash again with my hash where's my hash again and you can see i made a mistake though so let me just correct that because i don't want it like that i want it to look more beautiful so i'll just do this and type my hash key very well yeah i want more hash there and i'll just type in enter now and if we log out yeah so let's do let's do end end to go out end you can see end will take us out to um um, um what's it called privilege exec mode and disable we take us out to um um disable this able we take us out to user exec mode and exit will take us out fully and now if i click enter now um it's my message my message is not displayed for some reason so we have to go back and fix that so i'll do enable um configure configure terminal so banner motd that's the same thing we did let me use um let me use a dollar sign two dollar dine two dollar sign authorized users users only users authorized users only and then i want two dollar sign at the end and that's it 
and then if I log out again, let's go and see if this is working now. Disable, disable. Oh, what is what's, you can see? Disable cannot work here, so I'll use end then end, and I'll use exit here. And now I don't know where's where's my where's my where's my um where's my banner? Where's my banner? So for some reason my banner is not showing so enable conf t you can see conf t let's go again banner let me see what am i doing wrong banner m o t d um let me see banner m o t d mm -hmm. that's what i've done in it so then um c i'm not using c okay let me use c c um you can use anything i don't know what's going on i'm just coming to do that um authorized authorized access only and c again and enter and then if i go out and go out again exit exit authorized access only can you see that now this is what we use banner to do for some reason i don't know why it wasn't showing at the first time the first two attempts but this is what you want to be able to do confidently even when it's not working you should know what to do do not do not be stressed over it because that's why we are an engineer and that's why we are we are trying we are we are working to become an engineer so let me see i'm just going to the question if there's anything else i haven't mentioned um We've entered global configuration. We've set the time already and then explore additional commands like CL close. We've set the time and that's all. And that's all in this very, um, very um, packet tracer. And then um, let me just bring on another one and then call it a day after that. All right, this is the second packet tracer that I want to bring up. And this is 2.38 um, lab. And what I want to say here is this is just the same thing as what we have just done, but um, it's a physical mode packet tracer. And you can see we have devices around here and all these devices are all named as well. So you can um, maximize it, click on the plus here to see clearly what we have. So we have we have a switch here, 2960. We have another switch here, 3650. Then we have a router, 2901 we have um we have another router here we have another router here so they are just this is meraki and all that and here we have a pc and we have a laptop so what they want us to be able to do is to use our cabling cabling so if i go up here these are the cables that we use to connect the computers and the switch and the router so if you have a look at this this is a console. When you click on it, it's going to tell you. When you just um, maneuver and just you don't have to click on it, just go over it. It's just going to tell you the name of that cable. This is a console cable. This is what? This is a straight through cable. And this is a crossover cable. And this is a fiber cable. And all these ones, I don't think you're going to need it. And this is a USB cable. So let's let's do. Let's just do what they want us to do here. Let me just show, show us what to do. So here, they just want to make sure we know how to use cabling. Okay. So what I'm going to do is drag in the question. They want, they want us to drag this router here. They want us to drag it out. To the chef and they want us to drag um this pc here to the chef and they want us to drag this also to the chef and they want us to drag the 2960 um um switch to the to the chef so what you can do on this is right click on each of them if you right click you can see where it says is inspect ferns so this way you can see and maximize how a switch looks like. This is how a switch looks like. And you can see this switch actually has 24 ports. So with each 24 ports, it's got um, these two other ports. Those are console ports, if I'm not mistaken. So and you can see here, these are your um, indicators. They have meanings and you're going to understand that with time. So if I close this now, and then go to the router 
and do oh let's go to the to this let's go back to the switch and do inspect the rear the back of the switch and you can see if i maximize this is the console port not the one i was showing you the other one i was showing you in front of it and i will go back there and explain that so this is your console port so this is where you plug your cable if you are there in your cons room where you're working and you want to manage the switch this is where you plug a cable the call the console or the rollover cable plug it to the console and plug it to your to your computer to your laptop as well and then you'll be able to manage the the switch so if i go back to the where yeah here these two they are gigabit ports yeah that's what they are so these ones are fast ethernet ports so if i close that we can do the same for the for the for the router for the router and you can see a router if it's not layer 3, so because we have layer 3 switches now, or layer 3 device they call them, so you can see a router is just got not up to, it's just about two ports in there. So it's just about two ports in there. And um, and then that's that. this is a router for you. And you can also connect to the rear, um, to, to console ports on your router. I think that should be here. That's the console port here. And, so, and this, is, this is just what, all of them is all about and you can see we have a switch yeah look at it the zero means it's off one means it's on so let's bring it on so you need to be confident with what you're doing so if i click on this now you can see this green indicator here means that this um this week this router is on now let's see if the um, switch is not on let's switch it on also so i'll just right click and then say inspect for front and then maximize it and then uh, the switch is already on i think so that's why it doesn't have a switch and then let's go to the pc as well if i click inspect front and you can see for the switch for the for your pc this is where you plug your straight through or crossover cable depending on ethernet cable actually depending on what you need to do and this is your arg three r232 or three two something where you plug your console cable and you can see here is red so that's the button showing that the um the you can see here there's no lead it's showing that the pc is not on i can just bring it on by clicking on that you can see it's changed to amber and that tells you that the pc is on now we can do the same thing for the um click um close we can do the same thing for the laptop by clicking on there and then see if it's on or not i think this is it now i've just on it now it's off can you see that um let me see if i can yeah make it big so you can see is the switch it is off now i can just bring it on and that's it is on so if you are told to do something in a lab environment you need to ensure that the device is on that's that's what's very important so let me just go there and then just I'm looking for how to minimize this now okay that's fine go back so that's fine now so we've done all these things that's just what they want you to do so now they want us um let me just jump to the question well I click print language and select inspect where I've done that uh that's how you inspect install and infest I've done the PC so now they want us to connect the switch and PC using a roll over cable so now this is a rollover cable in order to be able to do that all you have to do is we are click we are connecting to the switch right so let's make it big a bit so that we can see so in order to be able to do that successfully what you have to do is click on your console cable and then that's a rollover cable and then the rollover cable will be plugged on um on here the pc that's this this side can you see how s232 not here because this is your first ethernet you cannot plug this here you need to plug it here and then go to your switch and then um is it to the switch here yeah? is it to the switch i just want to confirm where they want me to come yet yeah. right click so in order to then con connect that console cable because all these they are fast ethernet cable you won't be able to connect this what you have to do is right click on this inspect the rear 
and you can see the console cable is at the back there because you want to con connect it to the console cable and i'm just going to do that now and you can see there's a connection between my pc and my console cable and then let's see if i can you can see the switch as well I can manage it here because the CLI is not even provided. So in order to connect, to manage the switch, that's why they said you need to use a console cable. Now if I click on my computer and go to the desktop and go to terminal and click on OK, I'll be able to manage the, the switch from here. And that's all they want us to be able to do. So remember, the first um, prompt you are going, the first mode or the first prompt is the user exec mode. You need to type in enable if you need to go to the um, user exec mode. You need to, um, to privilege exec mode. Enable. So we are in privilege exec mode. Let's see what they have on this switch. You can just say show running, running. I just want to see what they already have on there. So there's nothing on there. It's just good to see. It's just good to see. So that command show running config is going to show you what you have on your so what is already running on this so there's nothing here so let's see we've done that let me see what more they have there for us to do um rs32 we've done this console we've connected it so configure packet tracer establish console session we've done that uh exec mode we've done that display and um, configure basic device settings okay what do you want us to do they just want us to do show clock so let's do let's go there so those are one of the things we can do here so now we are at the privilege exec mode let's type in our question mark so we need a show and you can see i have show here so if i say show and question mark so what do i want to see I want to see the clock so show what will give me the clock show see should be at the top show clock can you see that so all i have to do is just type in show clock clock if there is there anything more that i need to type with a question mark no there's nothing you can see detail display detail display detailed information so if i say ah which means carriage return if i click on the enter now it's, this is the time that is set on my on my time and date sorry time and date that is set on my on my switch then what i can do is reset the time now remember we did that in the previous one all you have to do is type in this and see what command do you need you need a clock then you just type clock question mark it's going to tell you you need to set question mark you need hour minute and seconds this is 21 10 um zero zero question mark you need month month of the year march question mark i need day of the month um this is zero six so it's gonna be six and then i need um year so 2023 and then question mark nothing more go on that's how you do that so we've done that let's see access six server so now they want us we finished with the console connection to the switch they want us to go back and do the same thing with the router but this time they want us to connect this laptop to the router and we are going to be using another in another cable called the um usb cable so what are you going to do you just click on it go to the to the to the to the, to the um what's it called to the laptop and ensure that you are connecting it to the usb okay to the usb not here because if i click on this this is an this is a fast ethernet port it's going to tell me that's not possible can you see that that's not possible if i click on it, it's going to tell me that's a console port that's not possible so you need to make sure you are connected to a usb port and then go to the router and then look for the router's usb port also where is that at so if you cannot see what can you do is right click inspect front make it bigger click on plus make it bigger and then look for the can you see that now i can see clearly now this is it here click on that and then there should be a connection between my um between my laptop and this can you see that now so i have that connection because normally they don't want us to be able to use the cli 
to manage this the router they want us to use the laptop also to manage the router so if i click on the laptop now and go to desktop and go to my terminal and say okay now this is my uh, my my um router conf config um, cli so from the router cli always and always when you get to a router cli you want to say no to this question would you like to enter initial configuration dialog you want to say no because you want to configure this by yourself that's why you need to say no so no and then enter and now you're going to see we have the greater than sign the greater than sign that means we are at the user exec mode we need to type in enable so it's the same thing it's the same thing as the switch enable take us to privilege exec mode and configure terminal take us to global exec mode let's see what they want us to do here as well if i go down and see yeah i've connected this i've done that i'm um, connect the router and laptop i've done that using a mini now configure the router and that's all they want us to do so here let's see what can we do can i just change the name of the router so let's just see what can we do from here if i put a question mark i, I i'm at the privilege exec mode a question mark that will show me what i can do so the only thing i want to do because we are done with this the only thing i just want to do is rename the router you can see this is the router name for now so if i need to rename the router i want to see what command do i need to do from here so let's go and you can see that command is not here which means i can name my router i can change the name of my router at the privilege exec mode so if i can do that i need to go to the global exec mode which is configure terminal and here if i type in question mark it's going to show me if i can can you see host name set systems network name so that means i'm able to do that i'll just type in host name and then let's say i want to name it r1 if i press enter you can see it has changed to r1 so these are the simple things um we have to understand in order to be successful they are very very important please let's get them done um the the question here is how do you prevent unauthorized personnel from accessing the cisco device through the console through the console port so in order to do that and this is going to make me do something else now so if you don't want anyone to have access to your um to your router or your switch through the console port that means you need to set a password that means you need to set a password and in order to do that let's see if we have the command to do that here let's see if we have so you can see here it says configure a terminal line so i'll just go there saying line if i type in line is asking me what password am i going to set so i'm going to say i want to set the password for my console because that's the question we are asked so i'll just say line console come question mark would always tell me so like console zero so you can see there that's what it wants you can see here it's telling you the next thing you need to type is zero so if i type in zero and type in enter now it's asking me to type in the password but if you don't know what to do you can always put a question mark and it's going to tell you what you need to do and you can see after typing in question mark this is the all of thing that i can do but what i want to do is to set a password so i'm just going to type password 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 and a question mark will tell me the next thing so it's telling me password right okay if you want to set the password specifies a hidden password we follow so i need to type in a hidden password now i need to just type in my password now so i'll just say password cisco and now let's type in question mark again it says carriage return that's all you need to do enter and that's it the password is set so as the password is set i need to type in one very good command log in that command is very important when you are setting password and now that's done if you don't type in login that password is not going to work so you need to make sure you type in login if we close this and now we want to get back to the console or let me i need to end this and exit 
now you can see it's asking me password now to have access so that password you set you can then type it in and that is the question you can see i'm in now enable and order and that's the question they're asking you how do you prevent unauthorized personnel from accessing the cisco device through the console then the que second question says what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the serial console connection compared to the usb console connection on a cisco router or switch my dear brothers and sisters i need to go and google this I've, i don't know but i know serial connection is a bit slower that's what i can say serial maybe that's the reason but i don't know but serial connections are slower because they they transfer data in one after the other so i'll end this video here and hopefully you would understand and then when you have any practical exam that has to do with this you know how to fix it thank you very much and please subscribe to my youtube channel and then don't hesitate to comment if there's anything you need me to add thank you very much and take care bye